Hello and welcome to Into the Woods with Holly Wharton. This podcast is all about our journey into the woods of ourselves, getting to know who we are, where we are, and where we're going in life so that we can create the life that we want to live. It's about deepening your connection with yourself, taking inspired action, and really trusting yourself and your intuition. It's also about mindset. Our beliefs are such an important part of this journey, and there are so many ways for us to change our mindset so that we can more easily live a life of expansive joy. This podcast is also about going literally into the woods and spending time in nature, and how that can help us on our own personal journey of self-knowledge. Thank you so much for joining us today. Now let's get into this week's episode. Hello, adventurers, and welcome to the Into the Woods podcast, episode 486. This is your host, Holly Wharton, and I'm back with another solo episode. Today, I'm talking about how outdoor adventures teach you what you can accomplish when you increase your tolerance for discomfort. Now, this is a conversation that's come up with a couple of different people recently. First with someone here on this podcast, and then in a conversation with a friend. And I think this is a really important kind of benefit of doing outdoor adventures and striving for goals and things like that. I never would have been able to run 100 kilometers if I hadn't gotten through many uncomfortable training runs. I never would have completed the coast to coast or any of my trails if I hadn't pushed beyond various types of discomfort. And I wouldn't be getting ready for my black belt grading if I hadn't showed up for many very uncomfortable and sometimes painful sparring classes. So I think we've all heard about the concept of getting comfortable with discomfort. And there are a lot of benefits to that. So I'm going to talk about this today. And interestingly, this is a topic that I was going to talk about two weeks ago. And I was just not having a good week and I was really exhausted. And I thought, I don't want to talk about discomfort right now because I'm really uncomfortable and this topic doesn't appeal to me. So it was something that I knew I wanted to talk about, but I was just really allergic to it a couple of weeks ago. <laughs> but now I'm ready. So here we are. So experiences beyond our comfort zone can be uncomfortable. That's why it's called the comfort zone. We're stepping outside of the comfort zone into the discomfort zone. But it's really important to pay attention to the fact that That doesn't mean that these experiences are wrong or not right for us. We can choose to step outside of our comfort zone or not. We can choose to have uncomfortable adventures or not. We can choose to have uncomfortable experiences or not. But it's really important to be aware of the fact that just because something is uncomfortable doesn't mean we should avoid it. It's a choice. This is how we grow. This is one of the ways that we can grow. And that's why I really like stepping outside of the comfort zone, because exciting things are beyond it. It's like building a muscle. You can't grow unless you push beyond the discomfort, like when you're lifting weights or doing any kind of activity that's building muscle, like it hurts. And if you just stop the second it hurts, nothing's going to happen. Like you're always going to get stuck at that point. So you have to kind of keep going and keep pushing in order to build that muscle. That applies to so many different things in life. Like you can't run farther or faster unless you push beyond the discomfort when you're training. You can't get better at an instrument unless you push beyond this discomfort of practice. You can't get better at public speaking unless you get through the discomfort of standing up in front of a bunch of people to speak. Now, I've said this many times before. When you expand your comfort zone in one area of your life, it expands in others too. I don't know how that happens, but it's just like you increase your willingness to be uncomfortable and the discomfort is somehow lessened and it just gets easier. The more you choose to step outside your comfort zone and experience discomfort, the easier it gets. It's like your discomfort muscle grows. You can tell I'm liking that analogy today. So how do you get comfortable with discomfort? Because it's uncomfortable. It's yeah. So it requires several different things. First of all, a change of attitude. It involves embracing discomfort for its growth opportunities and seeing that it can give us something, it can give us a gift, rather than seeing it as something that's hard, that we have to suffer through, why do I have to do this thing, I don't like it, nah. Like we can kind of get, nah. I don't know, I certainly get that way sometimes. But when you reframe that and you remind yourself that if you push through this discomfort, good stuff is going to be on the other side, That makes it easier. I think it makes it easier. 
but it's a huge change in attitudes. It's a shift in your perspective. It also involves a willingness. Getting comfortable with discomfort involves a willingness to be uncomfortable. Welcoming it, not avoiding it. That's another shift in attitude. Getting comfortable with discomfort also involves remembering that it's a choice. So as I said before, stepping outside your comfort zone is a choice. You can choose to stay inside it for now. That's okay. You can choose to step out of it now. You can choose to step out at a later date when it's easier or more convenient to you. Sometimes you're going to evaluate your priorities and you're going to evaluate where you're at and you're going to evaluate all the other stresses in your life and you're going to say, you know what? Now is not the time for this. I need to stay inside my comfort zone right now because everything is really stressful. I'm barely handling things. I just need to like coast for a while. And that's okay. You don't always have to be pushing yourself. And I talked about this a couple of weeks ago when I was talking about, do you always have to be growing? (laughs) No, you don't. Sometimes there are times for growth and sometimes there are times to just coast. And that's okay. Another thing that can help is to identify things that make you feel uncomfortable. And really dig into it and ask yourself, why do they make you feel uncomfortable? And what are the things that you can do to step outside your comfort zone and expand it? So this concept goes for outdoor adventures and it goes for other areas of your life. So there are various ways that you can experience discomfort in your adventures that will help you grow in your adventures. And again, that has a ripple effect in other areas of your life. So if you're a runner or a hiker or a cyclist, how can you go farther? How could you choose different terrain? How could you do things differently? Just ask yourself how you can take that sport and change it and make it uncomfortable for a particular amount of time. If your sport has different levels, like martial arts, what can you do to get to the next level? Like for me, it's been fairly easy moving up through all the colored grades. Once I got to brown belt and I went to brown white and brown black, that was a bit more challenging because we had the advanced courses for the gradings and that was a whole different level. That was a lot more challenging. This now is a whole new level. It's been really challenging to get ready for my black belt, and I really hope I pass because I've put a lot of effort into it, not just in terms of training, but in terms of doing mindset work to help me with the training and just putting in the time and putting in the hours, and it's been very uncomfortable at times. How else can you experience discomfort in your adventures? Are there any endurance sports or endurance events that you can sign up for in your sport or make your own events? My very first version of this was walking the South Downs Way back in 2015. I'd done lots of day walks before, but I'd never walked for seven days straight. And that was a huge lesson in endurance and a lesson in pushing through the pain and a lesson in getting up and doing the walk, even though I didn't feel like it because I had blisters or everything hurt and just kind of keeping going. And I learned so much from that that I could apply to future walks. So how can you take your adventures to the next level? and out of your comfort zone and into the discomfort zone. (laughs) Yeah, so ask yourself that question. Or maybe it's about trying a completely new sport or trying a completely different adventure and trying something new. That's a great way to experience discomfort because it means that you're learning something new and you've got that kind of initial awkwardness of doing new things and learning and not being very good at it. So that's really useful as well. And there are plenty of ways that you can experience discomfort outside of your outdoor adventures. So you could sign up for public speaking. I signed up for Toastmasters years ago. I think it was 2011. And it was completely life-changing for me. I was used to be super shy, super quiet, terrified of public speaking, and it really changed my life. So that's a great way. You could sign up for singing classes or join like a choir. Anything that involves performance is great because you're doing a new thing in front of other people. Acting, theater, dance. Like I said, performance is great because you're going to be doing the thing in front of other people. And that's really scary and that can really trigger our fears of I'm not good enough. And that's such a great experience because that's super uncomfortable. And it's a very safe way to experience discomfort because you're not going to fall off a mountain or slip off a cliff or do anything life-threatening. Worst case scenario, it's super uncomfortable and I mean, people could laugh at you, but that doesn't usually happen. So it's safe. So what are the benefits of getting comfortable with discomfort, with being uncomfortable? It just makes it easier to take risks. And there are times in life when we need to take risks or we don't grow or we don't get the experiences that we want to have. 
So a certain level of risk-taking is a really important skill to have. It is said that feeling uncomfortable is the key to success. And of course, that's because it helps us take risks. It helps us do new things. It helps us to do things differently. It helps us to do the things we need to do to grow and to find that success. Success usually doesn't just come to us, like when we're sitting at home reading a book or watching TV. Like it doesn't just come and knock on our door. Like we usually have to go out and get it. So getting comfortable with discomfort can help us find success. It can help us with emotional growth. It can help us with emotional resilience. It can help us to develop new skills. It can help us with learning. It can make us stronger. It can reignite a passion for life because being stuck in your comfort zone can kind of dull your senses and dull your passion for life and just uh, things can get boring and dull and gray and uh. But when you step outside of that comfort zone, you see new things, you experience new things, you learn new things. It's all new and exciting and different and uncomfortable and awkward, and it can reignite that passion for life. It can also help you to have difficult conversations and to make difficult decisions because having difficult conversations is uncomfortable, it's awkward, it's something we often want to avoid. But as adults, it's something we often have to do. So getting uncomfortable with discomfort can help us to have those difficult conversations that can change our lives, that can move our lives forward, that can improve communication with people. As I said, it can also help with making difficult decisions. So sometimes we get to a point in life where we have to make a difficult decision and we'd rather avoid it. But if we are comfortable with being uncomfortable, it can make that easier and it can make it easier to take the risks that we may need to take to make those difficult decisions. So there are tons of benefits of getting comfortable with discomfort. And I hope I've sold you on that concept. So ways that you can take action today. Maybe sit down and make a list in your journal of five things or more that you'd like to do, but you're afraid of. And then plan to take action on at least one. Pay attention to your feelings of discomfort as you're doing this thing. And pay attention to your attitude. Are you welcoming the discomfort or are you resisting it? Are you willing to experience that discomfort or are you still kind of trying to avoid it? And really try to understand what is the discomfort. Like, why are you feeling discomfort? What aspect of this experience is causing discomfort? And at the end, evaluate what have you learned? How have you grown? How has it affected other areas of your life? And then move on to the next thing. Or not. Because again, this is a choice. So if you're a big fan of adventure, this is probably something that you're used to. But I really do believe that adventure and joy and exciting things lie beyond the edge of our comfort zone. I mean, so many of the amazing things that I've experienced over the last decade and a bit, actually, no, most of my life really have happened because I stepped outside of my comfort zone. I mean, really one of the first big times that I can remember was when I was 21 years old and I studied abroad in Spain. That was huge for me. I had never been outside the United States before. And I've told this story, I think in pieces before here, somewhere here on the podcast, but that was huge for me. It was completely life-changing. And then I went to teach English in Central America, and that was a huge step out of my comfort zone. And that was, again, great. And so I really kind of, from a fairly early age, set myself up for taking risks and stepping outside of my comfort zone and having these big life experiences. And I think that's why it's easier for me to say yes to experiences like this. And I think it's really made my life very enriching and yeah, just generally good. <laughs> so this is going to be another short episode because again, I'm not going to ramble on here just to make it a half an hour or more. That's all I have to say on the topic, but I hope it has been interesting and useful to you. And I hope you have a fantastic time in your adventures. Please drop me a line and let me know how you decide to step outside of your comfort zone next. I would love to hear from you. If you enjoyed this episode, you might want to check out these related episodes. 482, I discuss how there's always room for growth, but is that really what you need? 468, I talk with Eric Dieter about how to use the ultra marathon mindset to get your epic life. 450, I discuss adventures and endurance. 369, I talk about getting out of your comfort zone with outdoor adventures. And 368, I talk with Yvette Webster about how to take your hiking to the next level. That's it for now. 
If you have any ideas for topics, things that you'd like me to cover, please drop me a line at holly at hollywharton.com or find me online and get in touch there. I have a huge list of topics, but I would always love to get your ideas. So that's that. Thank you so much for listening. And remember to visit hollywharton.com forward slash 486 for the show notes on this episode. Next week, I will be back with another exciting guest. I will be talking with Ethan Gallagher about the John Muir Trail, which I'm super excited about. That's one of the trails that I would really love to do. And Ethan has written a really entertaining novel about the trail that's based on his own personal experiences. So that's where we're going next week. And in the meantime, happy trails to you. Thanks so much for listening to Into the Woods with Holly Wharton. You can find more information about today's episode, including links for topics that were discussed, at hollywharton.com. That's H-O-L-L-Y-W-O-R-T-O-N.com. If you'd like to connect with other listeners and get support on your journey, I would love for you to join my private community on Patreon. That's patreon.com forward slash Holly Wharton. That's P-A-T-R-E-O-N dot com forward slash Holly Wharton. Thank you so much for listening, and I look forward to seeing you next week.